Welcome to Essentials Explained. Today we'll be talking about count ifs and how to tactically implement them in your Excel workbook. If you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe. Otherwise, let's dive in. So let's now talk about count ifs. So I can copy this sheet, I can drag it over and that will give me a great copy. Or one other thing I don't think I've mentioned, you can also do that in here. So right click, create a copy. I can place it anywhere I want. Hit OK, it gives me another copy. So I'll delete this sheet. And I personally prefer the control drag as I find it to be faster, but use whatever you want. I will just rename the sheet, Alt HOR. Let's rename sheet. I'll call it count ifs output because I am so creative and We'll call this customer instead of products. First thing we want to do, let's change this, right? So we, we don't longer want to look at product. We want to look at ownership category. I'll just use a pivot table to pull this in, Alt and VT. And maybe I want this on our existing worksheet. So I'll actually just put this down here and put it in my ownership category, right? So this is an easy way just to find the unique values in your file. We use the remove duplicates on the sum ifs exercise. If you remember that one, if you didn't watch that video, please check it out. If not, here's just another way to do it. So I pulled in ownership category. I can pull in owner. I could pull in pretty much anything if I wanted a unique list of values. I'll just leave that ownership category in there for now. This is all broken. Why? Because it's trying to do a lookup on pink color column where I have ownership categories in the criteria. Let's change this. What we could do is go to our working data and see pink color is in column H, ownership category is in column K. We just need to adjust that. So if I select this range, control H, use dollar sign H and put dollar sign K, I can use replace all. I'll update that and it will fix my formulas. Right, these seem to be working. It's the same values we had in our previous tab. Right, we can flip between them, we can see it, we could build a check if we really didn't trust ourselves. Let's say we don't want quantity here. Let's say maybe we actually care more about number of orders because quantity for a customer is tricky as you get mix at the product level. So often doesn't tell you a lot. Let's talk about orders and customers. So orders, we don't want sum ifs here. We actually just want to use count ifs because in our working data, each row is equal to one order, right? This is a single order on January 12th for 54 yellow paint premium. Let's go back. And the easiest way to do this is to use account ifs. So if I just change this to account ifs, I'm going to run into all kinds of issues because I have this extra sum range. And one way I could do this is with a find and replace, or I could just rewrite the formula. I'll show you quickly how to rewrite the formula just in case you're curious. And so if I use account ifs, I go back to my working data, I go to the ownership category. You see how that populated with ownership category? That will happen when you use named ranges. I'm gonna grab my corporate, I'll lock that in its column. I'll go back to my criteria range. I want the year. I'll fill that in, right? You see that named range is auto-populated. I didn't do that. I'll grab the year and I can lock that in place in the row and that would work, right? I could fill that down and this would give me the number of orders, maybe 450 in 2020, 439. You can see for the different ownership groups how many orders they had. Another way to do this is with a find and replace. So what I actually want to do is I'm just going to highlight this equals sum ifs working data and highlight the whole sum range up to the comma. So I will copy that with control C and I will highlight my cell range and use control H to pull up a find and replace. I'm gonna paste what I want to replace in here. And then I'm actually just going to write a simple equals count ifs open parentheses. Tab, tab, replace all to update that. And it looks pretty similar to what we had. So yep, I can do a quick check, right? If I don't really trust that I did this correctly over here and use count ifs on year for 2020, close that equals total. And that's true, right? This will not work. But if I change this to uh, LTM, that will now work, right? So this is orders. This is no longer average selling price. This is actually 
average order size, which I think is much more helpful. Um, let's just do this in the other two tables and so we can recreate this. So this isn't working Y because it says paint color. So if I highlight these cells, I'm just gonna change the named range. So change it from paint color, which is the lookup range it currently is, to ownership category. Again, make sure you're using underscores, replace all, and the, it looks like we're getting the same values. Yep, looks the same. This is obviously wrong because this is still a sum if. So what do I wanna do? I'm gonna highlight my sum ifs with my sum range. I will highlight the whole selection I want. Control H will let me pretty easily use equals count ifs. I no longer need the sum range of quantity and hit replace all. And you can see that it tied out with my previous example. So we're gonna go through our last example where we utilize indirects. We have our sum range, criteria range one, criteria range two. We need to change our criteria range one to the ownership category. If I fill that over, you can see our revenue call, our revenue table already works. If I copy this, let's say I wanna paste it in my quantity, I have the same issue. So this, I don't think actually will be quite as easy to find and replace because you have these cell references in here. So what I'll actually do is just rewrite this, which honestly is pretty quick too. Equals count ifs, and that also works. Um, that wasn't that hard. That would be a lot different with our top two, right? So the, the reason that was so much easier is because this is year, this is LTM, so I can't drag this to the right or this won't work. With an indirect, you have this delineation right here, so it's, it's actually really easy to just update in the right column and drag to your right. Quick note on how to do that. And so we've just updated all of these count ifs. One bonus tip here for you on updating these column headers, do a good job setting that up. So if I remove this row, you can see I have consistent spacing between my different tables. So if I just go up equals, I can use this. I can just copy this down and then actually copy it over, grab it, I'll copy it up actually. So now what I can do is just have one table header to update. So if I want to change this to, you know, maybe average order size dollar sign or something, all of these will update, right? If I want to put, you know, orders number for some reason, I could do that and all of these would update. Just makes your life a little bit easier so you're not constantly updating these. Um, again, I should do that here. It's just best practice is to have these linked up so your file is as automated as possible. If you're looking for more examples of how to utilize the Countess formula and how to use it to find the distinct number of customers in a file, please check out the next video in our series. Otherwise, thank you for watching. We look forward to seeing you again at Essentials Explained. Thank you.